This might be my third copy in the morning, so don't judge me if I talk a little quick. Hi there, my name is Emily, the Drone Angel, and welcome to your one-stop shop for everything drone related. Now over the years, I've traveled a ton with my drones to different locations with extreme weather conditions. I learned about the dangers of flying in hot and cold weather and developed safety measures to prepare for these type of conditions. Because let's be honest, we can't always say no to a flight if it means us getting paid that day. Today I'm going to share what happens when you fly your little dude in hot and cold weather and safety measures you can take to ensure a safe and successful flight. But before we get started, please take a moment and hit the subscribe button so you're notified when new videos go up. Even though it doesn't really feel like it because there's so much going on in the world, it is still summertime, that time of the year when the heat is at a high and you have to be extra careful when you're flying your drone. The sun can be very dangerous and deceiving, sometimes causing the drones to just power off and fall out of the sky. Common problems include battery failures, shorter flight times, condensation on your lens, overheated motors, and lagging video transmission. Heat can make or break your flight. You can fly in hot weather, but you need to be a little more prepared so you can maximize your airtime. Which brings me to tip number one. Timing is everything. If you're flying somewhere with high temperatures, try to fly in the early morning or late afternoon if you can. It's cooler outside, and the golden light during this time of day is more ideal for cinematic shots. I capture 85% of my footage during golden hour. Temperatures can be extreme here in California, especially in the desert. A couple years ago, I was capturing content for this boutique hotel in Palm Springs with my Mavic 2 Pro. By 11 a.m., it was 105 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Fahrenheit, I hope I said that right. Fahrenheit outside. It was a risky flight. I decided to make it a short flight and made sure my takeoff location was away from any obstacles in case my drone forced a landing. I launched my drone up about 200 feet up in the air and started orbiting around the hotel. All of a sudden, I noticed there was a lag in transmission, my screen started to black out, and there was a battery voltage warning. Uh, safe to say that I flew my drone down immediately. You wanna be hyper aware of what your drone's telling you when you're flying in these type of conditions. Avoid flying your little dude in temperatures hotter than 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Emily, it's really hot outside. I have to fly in the day. I'm on the job. What do I do? Here are some safety measures you can take to ensure a safe flight for your little dude. You wanna keep the drone cool, but not cold. Maybe you're on the job and you have to fly your drone midday when it's really hot. You risk losing your drone to equipment failure. If you're flying the next day, keep the case that's holding your drone open in a well air conditioned room. How now, brown cow? What is that? Stupid, stupid flint. You, you never want to leave your drone right next to an AC vent because if it's cold in the room, when you take your drone out to fly, it will create condensation on your lens. This happened to me in Fiji when I was staying at the Momi Resort, capturing underwater drone footage for a company. We would get up early to capture footage of the incredible sunrise before we went diving for the day. Every time I took out my drone or DSLR, boom, condensation would start forming on my lens. My friends and I started laughing about it because we kept missing Boehner shots. It got to a point where I started talking to my drone, begging it to work with me. I know, I'm crazy. If you're driving to your flight location, I highly suggest keeping the drone bag in the back seat of your car with the AC running until the moment you have to fly it. The reason I put it in the back seat is I want to make sure that it's away from the air vent because I know that direct contact with cold air can really ruin my batteries and drone. So I just open up the drone case, I let it chill back there, and I know it's cooling down but it's not too cold. Keep in mind, every second that it's in the heat is probably a minute that you could be capturing footage. Lego batteries and high temperatures do not mix well. They start to swell and it reduces your flight time. Personally, I like to keep it out of the sun as much as possible until I'm ready to fly. I like to be prepared for the worst case scenario and hope for the best. There is so much conflicting information about whether you can store ice packs with your batteries. I don't highly recommend it because in a sense, you're shocking your batteries from hot to cold to hot to cold. To me, that's my version of hell, of being hot then cold. I suggest avoiding putting your batteries right next to ice packs because you're ruining them that way. Also, the cells within the battery won't be able to retain their structure, which causes your batteries to fail earlier than expected. I don't know if I'm getting hot just because it's hot in here or because I'm talking about hot conditions, but this girl's sweating. 
Okay, so let's say I'm going down to Mexico. Mi amo Emily. I know, I'm such a gringo, but you get the idea. I'm really excited to go down to Mexico. Probably not anytime soon because of COVID, but I'm planning to go. And I'm really excited just to get down there and start taking photos. I'm planning to shoot at sunset. I know it's gonna be really hot down there, especially this time of the year, really sticky. So what I plan to do is pack some food because I'm a foodie and I love my food. And I put all my food in the cooler and I create a barrier between the cold food and my drone batteries. What I do with my drone batteries is I throw them in a well-sealed bag that has no air pockets and I want to make sure that the bag is waterproof and by creating that barrier I'm able to keep my battery safe but also cool so that way they're not too cold by doing this I'm eliminating any chance of moisture or condensation when it's time to take the battery out of the bag I let it sit until and warm up a bit for let's say about 30 minutes to room temperature since it's likely that the battery is colder than the surrounding air and there's a chance that, that moisture will develop on the battery <sighs> You can also put a silica gel pack in your drone bag to pick up on any extra moisture. Keep in mind your flight will be shorter, so I suggest putting it down sooner than usual. The warmer it is, the shorter the flight time. If it's close to about 100 degrees Fahrenheit out, I'll only keep mine up for about five to 10 minutes. So you wanna make sure that you plan out your shots ahead of time so that you can maximize your time up in the air. Air density, words you haven't heard since you were asleep in science class in high school, but it's something that you should become familiar with as a drone pilot. Here's a quick lesson. Dense air is often found at sea level and there is more air resistance to work with you as you fly your drone. The warmer the air, the less dense it is. The thin air requires more battery power since your motors are working so hard to keep your drone up in the air. Once you bring it down, wait until your cool little drone cools down down before adding a new battery and flying it up again. I know it's really hard because when you're in the moment, you're so excited, you just wanna fly your drone up again, but you have to give your drone some time to cool down before you fly again. There's every thumbnail I've taken. It's often not the drone, but the tablet that overheats in this type of weather. Think about it. When you're on your device for a long period of time, binging YouTube videos or scrolling through Instagram, your phone naturally heats up. It's working hard to keep you happy with all your apps. So keep in mind that your phone will likely overheat before your drone does. I recommend closing all your apps before your flight. They are distracting anyways. I learned my lesson the hard way when I was playing Scrabble with my grandma one day. You see, I was out on the boat flying over whales and dolphins and all of a sudden I got a bunch of notifications that my grandma was playing the five games that we were currently in. I'm sure the captain thought I was absolutely loco because I was yelling at my grandma while staring at the phone. If you live somewhere where it's hot most of the time of the year, I suggest looking into the DJI Crystal Sky just because supposedly the operating temperature is 103 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm not certain if that's true or not since I haven't used it for a long period of time, but if I lived somewhere where it was always hot, I would definitely look into purchasing it. Plan out your flight mission prior to bringing your drone out in the sun. Make sure to add an ND filter to cut down some of that light if you're wanting to capture cinematic footage. Check your camera settings before you fly since you will have limited time in the air. Set the home point in case you lose connection with the remote overheating. Double check that the compass is calibrated. As winter approaches, drone flying can be extremely difficult. Your cool little flying dude wasn't built for cold weather. Personally, I would take flying in cold weather over hot weather any day, but cold weather still affects every part of your drone, including remote, sensors, and tablet. Just like with hot weather, you have to be strategic about your missions if you plan to fly at locations with lower temperatures. Okay, I love you tipsy elves, but I'm hot right now. During the winter, there are locations that you're going to fly at that are cold no matter what time of day you fly. However, I would still gauge when it's gonna be especially windy out. For example, when I'm up in Mammoth, I find that it's a little bit more windy in the afternoon versus the very early morning. Apps like UAV Forecast or Windy should help you get a sense of how windy it is and let you know if it's safe to fly. If it's clear outside, I prefer to fly my drone at golden hour to capture cinematic drone shots that I normally wouldn't get if I fly in a day. Now, I would recommend not flying at temperatures lower than 32 degrees Fahrenheit, but I suggest just checking out what your drone manual recommends. At cooler temperatures, you're prone to battery failure, causing your drone to possibly fall out of the sky. Some climates are colder and wetter than others. For example, when I'm flying my drone where I grew up about 30 minutes inland from the beach, I find that there's less moisture to worry about. However, when I'm flying in the cold and wet air of Jackson Hole, Wyoming, I have to be concerned about moisture getting in my drone and batteries. I'm kind of sorry if you're one of those people that hates the word moist. Moist, 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 moist. But moisture can short out your motor's gimbal and camera. Try to avoid flying in that winter fog layer since it could be 
be extremely harmful to your drone. If it starts to rain or snow, immediately fly your drone down, dry off the propellers, and make sure all the parts are completely dry before you put it away. You want to minimize heavy control inputs on the joysticks. When you're flying at fast speeds, it requires more current from the battery, and it may cause a sudden voltage drop. Avoid full throttle as much as you can to maximize your flight time in cold weather. Flying in cold weather can also impact the drone sensors, which may cause the drone to drift or be less responsive to control inputs. Colder weather means shorter flight times because your batteries are drained faster. Typically, I can fly my Mavic 2 Pro or Phantom 4 Pros for about 20 to 25 minutes, but that time is nearly cut in half when I'm flying in cold conditions. Fly until your drone drops down to 30 to 40 percent capacity and then fly your drone back down. Before you take the step out the door to go fly, make sure your batteries are fully charged. Keep your batteries nice and warm, but not too toasty. The target temperature is 75 degrees Fahrenheit. If you don't own a LiPo battery warmer bag, then no problem. <sighs> I haven't drank water in like five hours. Just caffeine. Avoid keeping your batteries right next to the air vent since the direct heat can damage them. Store hand warmers in your drone backpack, but just make sure it doesn't have direct contact to the battery since that can ruin them. Similar to a car, you wanna warm up your engine before taking off. Start the propellers and let the drone sit for about 20 seconds, then fly it up about 10 feet high and let it hover for about 30 seconds. It won't take long for these babies to heat up to 75 degrees Fahrenheit and then you're ready to fly. Hovering also gives you time to assess your settings and make sure you're good to go. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, the biggest compliment to me is if you could share it with someone else that would also enjoy it. Of course, subscribe to stay up to date on new videos and feel free to comment below if you have any drone related questions or stories to tell. I would also love to hear your feedback on what I should share for future videos. If you're interested, I also do online educational consulting and hands-on workshops where I teach you how to fly over whales and dolphins. More information is on my website and in the links below. See you in the next video.